In this video, I want to answer the question, what are burn down charts? And also, what are burn up charts? And also, what is velocity? Quite simply, burn down charts and burn up charts are a way to measure progress. A burn down chart plots outstanding work against time, whilst a burn up chart plots completed work against time. Let's start with the burn down chart. On a burn down chart, as you make progress, as work is completed, then the amount of work remaining diminishes which gives us the characteristic downward slope of the burn down chart, which gives it its name. If, on the other hand, we plot work completed against time, then guess what? The work completed increases, and therefore the burn up chart gives us a characteristic upward slope. It seems to me that in agile projects, burn down charts tend to be more often used to measure progress on a single iteration or sprint. On the other hand, burn up charts are more often used to summarize progress on the whole project, and therefore time is often measured in units of an iteration or a sprint. As I just suggested, Burn charts are most often used in support of agile project management methodologies. The time axis can either represent days on an individual iteration or sprint, or can represent a longer period of time and is therefore likely to be measured in units of an iteration or a sprint. The work units are likely to be either estimated hours of work or numbers of story points we can get an idea of our progress against schedule if at the start of a cycle, we plot an ideal work curve. And then if we plot work completed onto the burn chart as we go, we can see how the two compare. Clearly, when we plot the ideal or planned burn curve initially, if we use hours as our estimate for the amount of work, then we would expect to see a straight line. When we use story points, and assuming all of our story points are of the same size, then again, we would expect to see either a straight line or more likely a jagged line that follows the path of a straight line. But of course, we may not complete a whole story point or finish a story point within a single day. If when we plot our actual burn down against our ideal or planned burn down rate, we find that the actual burn down curve is above the ideal line, then we know that the project is lagging and the team has to work hard to find a way to get back on schedule. If, on the other hand, actual progress lies below the ideal line, then we know that the team is ahead of schedule. This means that it may finish its backlog before the end of the cycle. This may mean that they choose to go to the product owner to draw down another user story into the current backlog so that they don't waste time during the cycle. Velocity describes the rate at which work is done and deliverables are produced. Note that velocity does not measure efficiency. This is because there is no way to calculate an ideal or baseline efficiency level in a project environment where we don't have long-term data. Rather, the purpose of measuring velocity is all about estimating and being able to calculate how long we expect future story points to take us to deliver. As we build up data about our velocity, or we can better estimate the number of story points that we need to bring into a cycle so that we can finish it in the cycle time. We calculate velocity as the work completed divided by the time elapsed. Typically, velocity is calculated over the time frame of a single iteration, 
cycle or sprint. As I said, we use velocity for planning future work. The velocity from previous cycles is the best indicator we have about the rate at which the team will be able to do work in future iterations. This allows the team to estimate how many story points to draw down into the next sprint backlog. The most reliable calculation of velocity, of course, averages the velocity calculations from a number of cycles and iterations. So as the project progresses, your estimate of velocity is likely to improve. However, it's worth considering that as you go on, it may be appropriate to remove from your averaging process the very earliest cycles or sprints, because at the start of the project, the team is learning how to work together. As it improves its methods and processes and ways of working through its retrospectives, then its velocity should naturally increase to reach an ideal level. In the Scrum methodology, velocity, measured as story points per sprint, is the single most important measure that we have. We have videos on Scrum, and we also have videos talking about how to estimate using planning poker and t-shirt sizing methodologies. I'll put links in the description. I want to end with an important point. Because you cannot use velocity as a measure of efficiency, you also must not use it as a performance measure to assess the performance of your team. And you certainly should not be using velocity as a KPI for the team to perform against. Please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it or learned from it. I'll be creating loads more great project management content for you, so please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.